Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm a chemical engineer, but more importantly, I'm a proud aunt of the most adorable two years old little boy, Martin. It's not because I'm his aunt, but he's really the cutest. With his chubby cheeks, the smilest smile, and he's really energetic. You should meet him in action. Sometimes I wonder how the world would be when Martin is my age. In 20 years in the future. Well, maybe 20 something years. <laughs> the city of the future. How does this sound to you, Martin? A city where cars glide through the streets without emitting any CO2. No pollution, no exhausts, just clean, fresh air. Can you breathe it, Martin? Rooftops are all covered in solar panels. And even windows help capturing the sunlight to power our homes and offices. Smart energy systems manage it all, ensuring that the renewable power is delivered efficiently to when and where it's most needed. Now, what about the lightest element on Earth? Hydrogen. Does it play a role in the city of the future? Hydrogen will be key in decarbonizing the production processes of essential components to build our homes, like steel, or to create the synthetic materials we rely on in our everyday life, like the fabrics in our clothing, the packaging that keeps our food fresh, or the components in our electronics. Now, imagine entering into a grocery store. In the city of the future, the vegetables, the fruits, the cereals we eat, grow thanks to plant nutrition solutions that are produced in a way that leave minimal environmental impact. Does this sound like science fiction to you? The truth is, this vision should become a reality by 2050 to reach net zero CO2 emissions. And the European Union is being really serious about this, investing up to 1 trillion euros under its European Green Deal. Imagine that. The city of the future, only 20 years apart. And when I think about this, I can only but picture my nephew Martin. Will we make it? Will Martin live in the city of the future? Ladies and gentlemen, the clock is ticking. Time is running out. And if we want to make sure that Martin lives in the city of the future, we definitely need faster research to turn this vision into a reality. Research. <laughs> That's a broad topic, isn't it? OK, let's, let's focus on how to produce hydrogen without harming the environment. That's called green hydrogen, since the energy required to split a water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen comes from renewable sources. And this process happens in an electrolyzer. An electrolyzer is built pretty simply. Picture it like, like a sandwich. <laughs> Two pieces of bread, one on the top and one on the bottom. These are the electrical current collectors. And in between, the magic happens. So if we want to build the perfect electrolyzer, we need to prepare the perfect sandwich. And for that, we need the finest tomatoes, the freshest and crunchiest lettuce, the best ham, of course, from Spain. The creamiest cheese and the crispy bread. And how to find them? We need to try them. 
we need to test them. We need to taste them. We need to experiment on them. So just like trying to prepare the juiciest, the tastiest and still affordable sandwich, our job in research for electrolyzers involves conducting experiments to find the best materials for the anode, for the cathode, for the electrolyte, for the hydrogen ion conductive membrane, while still optimizing the operating conditions which ensure and which enhance efficiency, durability, and of course, cost. To do this, we run several important tests in our lab. One of them is like a health check for the electrolyzer. Using a method called electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. Pretty easy to remember, right? In this method, we measure the heartbeat of the electrolyzer, or how the different layers in our sandwich allow electricity to flow. Just like a doctor would do during a checkup, this method helps us to spot potential problems early on. We also push our electrolyzer to their limit, just like athletes like Usain Bolt train for endurance. So just like Bolt has to build up strength and speed at 2,000 meter altitude to perform at the top of his game on the track, we push the electrolyzer through intense conditions to see in only a few weeks how many years they last in the real world. Additionally, we make our electrolyzers to go through rapid temperature and pressure changes. Cycles, these are called. It's like taking the electrolyzer from the Sahara Desert to the freezing Mount Everest temperature conditions in seconds. At the very end, the electrolyzer has to handle the constant ups and downs of the real world. So if our sandwich survives these extreme swings, then we know it. It is ready for the real world. Now, I have a question. How many sandwiches you need to prepare to find the perfect one? And the same is with electrolyzers. Testing, 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 testing. And I can tell you from my experience during my PhD in chemical engineering, I learned it the hard way. Especially if you want to replicate industrial relevant conditions, this can take ages. But now, imagine, instead of testing one sandwich after the other, we are able to test 10, 12, 14 sandwiches at a time. How much time could we save? Well, it is, this is what high-throughput experimentation is all about. And for electrolyzers, I tell you, it is a revolution. It allows us to perform experiments in parallel, to automate our tests, and with digital tools to gather and analyze really quickly the vast amount of data generated. Now, in this new, exciting world of green hydrogen, we face a big challenge in the lab. And that's the lack of a standardization of tests, which means different labs are getting different results, making it really hard to compare findings. But if we really want to advance the electrolyzer technology more rapidly, scientists and engineers worldwide must collaborate like a global kitchen being able to share data and insights. And here, high throughput experimentation offers a way forward with a more systematic approach for testing. At the very end, it enables us to evaluate which exactly which tomato best fits in our sandwich or in other words. Which electrode materials reduce the energy consumption of the electrolyzer or which membrane enhance the hydrogen purity. I truly believe 
in the power of science. And I'm convinced that by applying high throughput experimentation to the hydrogen research, we can effectively bridge the gap between laboratory breakthroughs and real world implementation. This isn't a battle about which fuel will power our world or which technology will best decarbonize our future. Whether it's electrification, green hydrogen, synthetic fuels, biofuels, or something else. We all have a common goal. Fighting climate change and protecting the health of our planet. Yes, some of these technologies may need an upfront investment to reach the same market, the same level of market competitiveness like fossil fuels. But fossil fuels, they form over thousands, over millions of years beneath our Earth, and we have been paying for them gradually, not only financially, but also with environmental damage. The longer it takes us to switch to greener technologies, the greater costs for our planet. We stand at the edge of one of the most important revolutions after the Industrial Revolution. A time to rethink how we power the world. A time to design the city of the future where Martin will live. And time to think how we produce our products without harming the environment. We have done it once before and we will do it again with innovative energy solutions. But we can only do it together as humanity. Now, you may be thinking, but what can I exactly do as an individual to make this future a reality? Do I really have the power to contribute? Absolutely yes. The acceleration of the green hydrogen revolution is only possible with you, and with you, and also you, and you. We as individuals, we hold the power to impact the causes we care about, to engage in the campaigns that matter, and to influence the policies that shape our future. You are not doing this just for yourself. We are doing this for our present. We are doing this for our future. We are doing this for the next generations. And I, I do it for Martin.